right. Welcome to a new episode of the Rock Fantasy Files. On today's episode, I'm here to chat with Metal Blade, Blacklight Media recording artist, capper guitarist, Tyler Harper. Tyler, welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. uh, Go ahead. We're here to chat about the new album, In Transmission is the title, correct? And it's being released April 23rd, Blacklight Media and, of course, Metal Blade Records. And good afternoon. Welcome to the show. What can you tell us about the debut album? It is, it is the debut album, correct? That's correct. Yeah, we did an EP back in May uh, with two songs, Torture Ship and Paper Tongues. And now we've got the whole package coming. So it's going to be a, a completely chaotic controlled chaos ride through and through we thr- we tried to throw in as many elements of genres that we listen to daily so it's got some black metal it's got some thrash it's got hardcore it's got punk it's going to be a good album definitely I, I listened to a little bit of it already and i did watch the videos uh i guess the song torture ship since i'm not that familiar is something that was on the ep then as you just mentioned and uh that that so that's not a a not not a song from the upcoming album it will be on the upcoming album we actually had we had it uh remixed and remastered by taylor young of nails uh mastered by brad boatwright over at audio siege and uh mixed by taylor so it's a it's a new version it sounds a lot bigger okay Uh, what went into the making of that video uh that was done what last spring yeah, that uh, we just wanted to do a dark, almost live performance. Um, so we did it. We shot it, you know, locally right down the road. And uh, we, we went out into a warehouse and we just went we went off. That was our first uh, that was our first performance video. We wanted to give the, the viewer a taste of kind of what our live shows are like. Yeah, that's how I kind of find out, found out about it, because I've just found out about your band and I thought it was uh very well done. I also cool. just watched the, and I guess is there, before we move on to anything else, is there a message behind that song, The Torture Ship? Is there uh, some meaning behind that? Uh, I'm sure there is. I, I can't speak for Crow's lyrics. Uh, she, she typically okay. takes all of our songs and the emotion of the song and she'll put it in with one of her struggles, so. Okay, great. I also just saw the video for The Locust Preacher, which is, I guess it just been released recently. And, yeah, uh, we, we put that one out February 3rd. Oh, you did? Okay, and how's that doing for you? Is it getting some views? Yeah, yeah. People seem to really enjoy that song. I think we're up to 13,000, 14,000 views on that video. Excellent, excellent. So uh, what is the lineup in the band currently? Uh, currently, it's myself. I play guitar. Uh, we have Crow Lotus on vocals. Uh, Jeremy Randazzo, he's our drummer. And Ben Paramore is the bassist. Okay, cool. Uh, so I, I actually saw a video from you a couple of years ago, and it was not Crow uh, singing. Uh, Correct. The, the, the Correct. Male vocalist at the time. Yeah, that's right. We had uh, his name was uh, Lee, and um, we parted ways with Lee at the end of 2017 after a tour, and okay. uh, that's when we kind of realized that we wanted to go into a a different direction we we were sounding a little bit too metal uh, if that's a thing like we wanted we want to blend our sound we want to have that metal we want to have that hardcore and that punk and we knew that we wanted a female to you don't see too many females in hardcore bands and that's that's what we wanted and she took us uh she took us to that next level her vocals sit perfectly over what we're doing and it just, it gives her a voice and it allows her to give a voice to people that, you know, may ne- not necessarily feel like they have that voice. Yeah, she's definitely uh, very talented from what I've seen in the videos. And uh, it's a great stage presence and a great, and like, like a really raw form of vocals. I found it yeah. quite, uh, quite unique. You do, it did remember, I watched, I read your bio, you were trying to talk a little bit about bands from like the night nineties, early two thousand, I did get that vibe. But I also feel like I, I do feel the other things you say. I feel a lot about. I feel a lot of hardcore. There's some breakdowns. There's some changes. Very good stuff. Thank uh, you. I'm lost track of my uh, questions with you now. Oh, okay. you kind of answered this already. I was going to ask who writes the lyrics. You said that she did already. And uh, 
what did, was she in another band before you before she joined uh, Capra? And how did you find uh, find her to the grab? Yeah, the we were we were all playing in different bands um, except Jeremy and I. Jeremy and I have been in the same bands. I think we've been in nine bands together over okay. our lifetime. Uh, ben was in another band called Come and Conquer. It was kind of like a thrashy hardcore thing. And then she was playing with a band called Six Six Six. Oh, and wow. it was uh, this kind of like industrial metal where okay. she played bass and uh, she did a few, she did a few little vocal parts, which uh, is, is kind of why we brought her into the band. But this is actually her first full just vocal band. Okay. And you guys are out of Louisiana. Are you down, are you down by New Orleans? Are you in the NOLA scene or? We, uh, we play New Orleans quite a bit, but we're two and a half hours west of New Orleans. Oh, okay. Okay. I was wondering, because I did see Louisiana, and I didn't actually get a chance to look it up on the map, see how close you were with that whole NOLA. Yeah, every, every band that comes from Louisiana is from New Orleans, pretty much. Yeah, they are. It's like New York City. Everybody's from That's New right. York. That's <laughs> right. That's right. So I guess for viewers who have never heard the band Capper, because you guys are pretty new, how... You kind of described us a little bit already in the conversation, but how do you describe the experience of listening to the band and what style of music? You'd say hardcore. Is that you know, what we're going to label it as, like a hardcore? I typically say rock and roll, but uh, you have so many different genres these days. I mean, I think that we fit more into the hardcore realm of it, uh, but we also throw in those punk aspects. We just want it to be as chaotic as possible. Uh, we, we try to write, you know, from, from our actual feelings. We try to sit down and say, like, hey, you know, if I'm having a bad day, I'm just going to play guitar and I'm going to write how I'm feeling about it. It's it's, it's a form of therapy. So we put we put everything we've really got into it. Listening to the album, I think you can I think you can really hear that. Excellent. And uh, what are some of the some of the tracks that you uh, find dearer or nearer to your heart from the new album that we can look for when it comes out? Uh, well, the Locust Preacher, our, our first single, is quite possibly one of my we've ever written. That was the first song that we wrote as the lineup that we are now. So okay. it kind of holds this sentimental value. Uh, but then you've got songs like Mutt and you've got songs like Deadbeat Assailant that it's kind of we uh, I don't want to get too far ahead, but we, we wrote those songs in quarantine these past years. So it, it really shows our, our newer direction, like where we're going to go with the songs. It's a little bit more thrashy. So those, those definitely are holding well to me. Excellent. Excellent. I guess, uh, what are some of your influences uh, in, from bands and, you know, playing the more extreme version? How, what got you into the metal scene or the punk scene or whatever else is uh, some of your influences? I think it was... Early on, I had a, a Hellfest DVD, and uh, I popped it in, and I saw Dillinger Escape Plan on there. Okay. And I realized, like, you know, aside from me listening to, like, Black Sabbath and early Metallica and stuff like sure, that, sure. but this was the first time I had seen uh, metal and hardcore done in this completely controlled, chaotic way. And uh, yeah. so Dillinger Escape Plan, uh, and then I, I ventured into Botch, and I got into Converge. And then finally, every time I die. So I try to, I try to take what the Godfathers did and make, you know, put my own fresh opinion on it. I think we're both guilty of, of having dogs in our room. I don't know if you can hear mine. Mine's oh yeah, going, mine's going uh, crazy in the next room. And I guess I gotta say, well, hey, he had the dog on video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, she was doing so well. Well, at least, as long as you can't hear mine, mine's having a fit, like, in the next room over right now. <laughs> no, I can't hear her. Oh, good, good. Okay. So, we're both animal lovers, obviously. <laughs> we That's both right. got our dogs with us for the show. Well, one, one's in the dog. other room, but... Uh, you'll see her. You'll see her walking over. She wants to be yeah, on there camera. You go. There she is. <laughs> the official mascot of Capra. That's, That's right. So, uh, I don't know, album that changed your life. I always ask this to all my... Uh, victims that want to come on the show album that changed my life uh I, it's not even metal it's uh pink floyd's animals hey everything goes together a, a right. great choice a great choice with pink yeah. floyd animals uh the last concert you attended as a fan 
as a Didn't fan. Think that far back right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a very long time. Oh, it sure has. Uh, actually, the last show we played, I also attended as a fan. We did a okay. show with we did a show with uh, Today is the Day and Child Bite. Okay. Before that, I think it was I think it was Broken Social Scene, this uh, indie band from Canada. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I guess is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, you know, we're gonna say how do we find you? I mean, that kind of a silly question because anybody can put it into a search engine, but uh, you've got That's a right. website we can check out, and you've got uh, Facebook and all that. I'm sure social media. Yeah, we have Facebook. Uh, it's going to be like the slash Capper Band. Same with Instagram. Capper Band is, a, is our handle. We have Twitter. Uh, we're on Bandcamp. That's where we sell majority of our merch. If you'd like to pick up a t-shirt or a hat, uh, we have all yeah. that. And then I would go, I would say go to the blacklightmedia.com slash Capra. You can pick up, we have um, the album coming out April 23rd. And we've got it on three variants of vinyl. They're all very beautiful with a exclusive T-shirt. Yeah, I, I did briefly see that. I saw you've got. The, did you handpick the colors of the vinyl or did the record label or? No, we did. Uh, we did two of them. So the pink and black splatter. Uh, we wanted to be based off of the one of the Joy Division albums. Okay. Uh, that that we saw, and then for. The, one of the exclusive European ones, we just wanted that that uh, that black and yellow kind of, I forget what they call it in, in vinyl. It's like, it's almost a marble. Okay. Uh, and then I had I had our project manager pick the third because I wanted to be surprised uh, to see one. I'm a I'm a huge vinyl collector, so I wanted you know when I open it, yeah. I've already seen the photo, but when I open it, I wanted it to be a surprise for me. I'm old school. I'm right there with you. I like to have the product in my hand. I mean, especially now I've, I've slowed down with my lifestyle, of course, with everybody else with the pandemic. Same, it's one of yeah. the joys in life to get a new album and just yeah, sit down. I, this is the room I listen to music in too. It's my old uh, living room from the 80s in my house turned into my office a little bit. It's fun yeah, just to sit down cool. with a drink or whatever else on a, on a Friday night or something with a new album and sit and read the lyrics and actually hold it in your hands like a book you know that's, how, that's uh, what i love to do yeah i can't wait to get a hold of them then and, uh, you know I, what like 2021 just being better than last year we've got a ton of music coming out you know you yes. got the new cannibal corpse album you've got yeah. our album you've got a new gojira album which is insane there's just so many bands doing a lot of a lot of things this year. Of course, like a lot of people were holding out from last year to try to get something going this year. And some people are just putting stuff out and still not being able to tour with. Do you have any kind of plans with, uh, I mean, our, I'm, we're all in a holding pattern, so it's hard to ask this question. But do you have any plans for 2021 with the band? Are you able to play any kind of gigs down in your area or thought of doing like uh, streaming a few songs live? just to get people a taste or anything like that? Or do you have any plans that you can discuss for 2021? Mm -hmm. Locally, I don't think we'll be able to do anything, um, but it, it, there are places that are opening up. Our booking agent is hopeful for fall. So yeah. we may be up in the New York area, you know, September, October time, which would be great. I heard y'all were, awesome. were opening venues. We actually held on to our album. It's been finished since 2019. Okay. And, uh, so we held on to it for an entire year and then we got shut down and we added yeah. three more songs to the album. So it's been done. Okay. We've been sitting on it for too long. We just can't wait any longer. It's true. At least you get some new music out there and uh, like hopefully you say like in a few months behind, we'll get caught up to some type of normalcy and uh, we'll see you up in New York. I don't have a venue myself, but uh that's the whole thing. We're looking at a whole new roadmap of who's going to be the venues. One's a going to stop. Yeah. It's, it's like the local bowling alley in town going to start doing shows instead. You know, other places that survived, it's just going to be quite interesting. I know the Chance Theater in Poughkeepsie is still planning on reopening and actually booking shows. Dingbats, which is in New Jersey, which is only about an hour from me, is starting to book shows in March in New Jersey. Of course, you know, limited guests and all that stuff but uh of course fingers crossed that uh, yeah you know, it's looking black, it's looking good the black cloud keeps moving away 
You know? Yeah, I, I hope we're in that that uh, that period of, of having. Shows. I didn't really time this. I think we started a little bit earlier. But is there anything you'd like to end to wrap this up today? No, I just look forward to releasing this album. It's a time when when you know people really need music and they really need that that outlet yeah. for their aggression that we've kept pent up for what feels like eternity at this point. I've been talking about that for such a long time, even last summer with some friends of mine that are in a hardcore band up here, All Out War, Michael Score, that's been on the program with me a couple of times on the show. And we were just saying how society needs a mosh pit right now. Yes, it does. We Let just need mosh pits. We need mosh pits. Along. We need circle pits. We need stage dives. Like, that's and most people what get I'm along in that mosh pit too. You know, there's no social media, no mo nothing for everybody. If you fall down and you pick you up and keep going, then it's just that's part exactly of that right. Scene. Yeah, yeah right. that's like you know, that's a time when I black out. It's when I'm on stage and I black out. I, I don't worry about anything, no bills, nothing. So we exactly, it's like the amusement park that. or something for us. You go there and you like to block out everything else in life, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. So I guess we could wrap this episode up. So make sure uh, I'll put all the links in the video so you can find these guys, you know, so you don't have to go searching and typing. We'll just put a lot of links in and I, good luck with your album coming out. I'm going to try to get some for sure to stock in my record shop up here in Middletown, New York, Rock Fantasy. And uh, fingers crossed that everything gets a little better down the road, Tyler. And I get to meet you guys at a gig sometime. Yeah, I look forward <laughs> to seeing you, man. Thanks for the interview. I really appreciate it. All right, rock on, and uh, please hit, take a moment to subscribe, see all the things we have coming up. We'll be talking with uh, the band Benediction this week. We'll be uh, doing a panel on Venom, and we'll be doing a panel on The Who this week on Rock Fantasy Files. So thanks and support. Support Capra, Metal Blade, Blacklight Media, and everything right. else. Thank you.